mother secretly captured what her son did to his sister at night. The story unfolds in Vladivostok, a small town in Siberia, Russia, during the winter of 1986. On that particular night, Natasha, along with her son Alex and daughter Nikita, were all at home. Her daughter Nikita was sleeping in her room, and Natasha sang her a lullaby. When she saw her daughter fall asleep, she switched off the light in the room. Before going to bed herself, Natasha took a deep breath, but just after she had finished showering, she heard her youngest daughter scream. Her heart skipped a beat, and she hurriedly ran out of the bathroom. She rushed to the little girl's room, feeling extremely unsettled because upon arrival, she found her daughter crying, while Alex seemed to be trying to comfort her, asking, what's wrong, little sister? Why are you crying? It's just a nightmare, don't cry anymore, don't cry, I'm here with you. Natasha's expression darkened with her daughter's crying. She was scared. But upon hearing her daughter's cry, she quickly adopted a gentle and reassuring demeanor. She whispered softly to her daughter, what happened, my daughter? What's wrong with you? Mom is very scared seeing you like this. Nikita had a nightmare, Mom, I heard her crying in my room, so I ran to check on her, Natasha came over to hug her daughter. As Alex looked at them, the little girl's face softened. It's just a nightmare. Look who's here to comfort you. Calm down, my love, Mom is here. Natasha said soothingly. Tell me what could make you cry like this to my little girl. Thank you. Alex, for coming here to comfort your sister. You're a very good brother, and I'm proud of you. But it's too late for you to stay up. You should rest too. I'll take care of Nikita. Without hesitation, the little girl held on to her mom tightly, as if still feeling something lurking around. Alex looked at her tenderly, grateful for his mom's presence to calm her down. All right, mom, see you tomorrow. Nikita, see you tomorrow, he said softly. Good night, mom. Alex watched his mother and sister with a warm smile on his face. He sighed deeply, then walked into his room, lying down on his bed and yawning. Finally, his eyes closed. His mother continued to watch over Nikita, whose eyes were swollen from crying but gradually calmed down. Natasha stroked her daughter's hair whispering words of love and comfort. What happened, dear? Everything's all right now. Mom is here with you, she said, her eyes filled with gratitude. Nikita nodded, and Natasha arranged the pillows and blankets, kissing her forehead before staying by her side until the little girl drifted back to sleep, this time with a smile on her face. Then Natasha walked past the boy's room. Check if he's asleep too, she sighs and thinks, what a sweet boy. Then she goes to sleep feeling very tired. The next day, Natasha was awakened by her daughter's innocent voice, Hi mommy, it's daytime. Natasha struggled to open her eyes against the fatigue and drowsiness that had haunted her all night, but what she saw when she raised her head filled her heart with joy and relief. Her little daughter was there in front of her, with a radiant smile on her face and arms wide open, waiting for a warm hug from her mother. You woke up already, you beat mommy. I like seeing you so happy, I love hearing your laughter, but I have to go to work and your brother has already gotten up. No mommy, he's still asleep. Do you want me to wake him up? The mother, already up and ready to start her routine, looks at her daughter with a mixture of tenderness and amusement knowing that her daughter loves to bother her brother. Well, yes, let's wake him up. The first rays of sunlight flood the kitchen as Natasha prepares breakfast. The children, for their part, can't stop talking about a thousand things at once. They seem full of energy. It seems like everything is back to normal, she thinks to herself, feeling a deep relief in her heart. But the incident repeats itself several nights later and Natasha begins to feel a growing concern for the safety and well-being of her little one. Upon entering her daughter's room, Natasha sometimes finds Alex in her little sister's room. 
Other times, no matter how hard she tries to find answers to understand what's happening, she can't come up with an explanation. Could there be something in the house causing these strange episodes? There must be something scaring Nikita. But whatever it is, I'll find out. One of those nights when she hears her daughter crying, Natasha, with her heart pounding heavily in her chest, stealthily approaches the little one's room. In her mind, the question persists. What could be causing these nightmares? The tension mounts, and an unsettling sensation takes hold of the mother as she enters and sees her little one curled up, crying uncontrollably. She rushes to embrace her and scans the room, but there's no one else. What's happening? Why are you so scared? Please tell me what's going on. I need to know so I can help you. Don't be afraid to tell me how you feel. I promise we'll find a solution together and figure this out. Mommy, it's because I feel like someone touches me inappropriately while I sleep. But when I wake up, I don't see anyone. When my brother hears me, he comes to comfort me and sings me a song to calm me down. But sometimes, when he doesn't come, I get really scared, mommy. The mother tries to dismiss any disturbing thoughts and focuses on comforting her daughter. But the idea that something unsettling might be happening in their own home starts to make her heart beat faster and her breath quicken. Natasha knows she must stay calm and find answers to solve this enigma. Yet deep down, she wonders if there's something else going on in their home, something she hasn't discovered yet. The tension and uncertainty weigh heavily on her mind. The suspense continues to build as the mother prepares to confront the mystery lurking in her home. Hi Alex, come here with mommy. I need to talk to you. Hi mom, are you going to scold me? Did I do something wrong? He asks seriously. No, sweetheart, why would you think that? You're a wonderful young man. Lately, your little sister has been crying a lot at night, and that's really worrying me because I don't know what might be happening to her. I'm also concerned that it might wake you up. I know it can be very annoying and frustrating to be woken up like that. I want to ask you something. Have you seen anything unusual when you go to her room? No, mom. I just know she screams ugly when she dreams, and when I hear her, I go to her room to calm her down. Every time I come, I find her crying and scared. Okay, my love. You're a good little brother. Now, I'm going to ask you a big favor. From now on, when you hear your sister screaming, instead of going to her, come get me right away. Alright. Yes, mom. I'll do that. Alex replied respectfully. You're our little protector. I'm very proud of how you take care of us and your sister. The safety of her family was the most important thing to Natasha. That's why she had decided to take drastic measures to protect her loved ones. At night, she made sure to check every door and window. The suspense continues to grow when the mother checks the windows of her house ensuring they are locked and there are no gaps where an intruder could enter. Despite Natasha's efforts, her daughter continued to cry at night without her understanding why. She doesn't know what else to do, so she seeks advice from her mother to try to solve the mystery that kept her on edge. Daughter, there must be a dark and mysterious reason behind your daughter's nighttime crying. Why don't you sleep with her? I've already done that, mom, but her bed is too small and we both can't fit. Plus, I'm exhausted from spending sleepless nights just watching over her. Why don't you hire someone to take care of the kids while they sleep? Imagine sleeping knowing that your children are being looked after by someone trustworthy. This way, you can rest assured that Nikita and Alex are in good hands. Oh, mom, my budget doesn't allow for hiring a nanny to take care of them during the day, let alone at night. You know I always have to leave my two kids alone while I work. Please help me think of another solution. I won't be able to sleep well at night until I resolve this issue with Nikita. This situation is really alarming, and we have to find out why Nikita wakes up crying every night. Wait, I'm thinking of something. 
The best thing you can do is to put a hidden camera in your daughter's room and other places in the house. You've given me a great idea. Yes, that's what I'll do. It's definitely the best way to find out what's going on and why Nikita wakes up crying. The lack of sleep and constant worry are starting to seriously affect me. For days, she secretly observes the videos from her laptop. Her children don't know she's installed hidden cameras until one night, while reviewing the security footage, she sees something strange and sinister happening in her home, something she never would have imagined. Natasha watches some unsettling scenes in the house videos. She clearly sees Alex smoking, drinking liquor from her husband's bottles, and stealing valuable things. The poor woman couldn't believe her eyes. She regains her composure and decides to confront the boy. What are you doing, Alex? How is it possible that I didn't notice before? The poor woman feels completely lost, unable to process the truth of what she has discovered about her little one. She wonders how something like this could have happened. The anguish that she had already been feeling intensifies as the uncertainty of not knowing what to do with this new discovery grows. What else could my son be hiding? What other secrets could he be keeping in his little heart? The idea that there is more to uncover, more to face, fills me with fear, yet she decides to confront Alex. But deep down, she feels sorry for the boy. Who knows what kind of life he had before? She thinks to herself as she enters his room and sits beside him. She takes his hand gently and tells him that she knows what he's been up to. I understand that your parents may not have been the best people. But that doesn't mean you have to follow in their footsteps. You are a wonderful person, and I love you for who you are. I don't want you to behave like this ever again. Alex lowers his gaze, feeling ashamed and remorseful for his actions now that he's been caught by his mother. It's okay, mom. I promise I'll never misbehave again. Please forgive me. Tears run down his cheeks. I know you can change, and the three of us can be a happy family filled with love and respect. I want to be by your side. I'll support you in whatever you need, but you have to promise me that you'll leave behind that destructive behavior. Thank you for being so good. I promise I won't do bad things anymore. I love you so much, mom. I hope so, sweetheart. You and your sister are the most important things in my life, and I'll do whatever it takes to see you both well and happy. Natasha is a single mother. Her husband had recently passed away. They always wanted to have a daughter and a son, but her husband departed before they could have their son. So Natasha decided to adopt a boy from a local orphanage. She had seen several children, but one, in particular, caught her attention for his intelligence and tender gaze. His name was Alex, and he was about eight years old. Now they were a family of three, and she felt very happy. Finding out what her son was doing was tough to accept, so much so that Natasha was stunned and unable to process what she had discovered. She knew she needed to talk to someone to vent and get advice on how to handle the situation. Several weeks after Alex came home, strange things started happening. I began to notice that some things were missing, money was disappearing, and sometimes I even smelled cigarette smoke in the house. It seemed like the liquor bottles were decreasing, she said. She decided to seek support from her mother, who listened attentively but was clearly in shock at what she was hearing. The idea that something like this could be happening in her own family was hard to accept. I can't believe it, daughter. How did you not notice before? Natasha replied, I didn't pay attention to these events, mom, because I thought it must have been part of my imagination or just work stress. You have to return him to the orphanage immediately. Imagine what else he might be capable of doing. Do you realize he could be capable of doing even worse things? Oh no, mom, how can you say that? Poor thing, I can't believe you're saying this, Natasha said, Alex is just a confused young boy who needs a lot of love and understanding. Are you saying you're going to keep him and let him continue living here? 
under the same roof as Nikita. He would be a very bad influence on her. I already talked to him. He's remorseful and promised me he'd stop doing those things. Besides, I can't just discard him like he's an object. I adopted him, so now I must give him all the love and help he needs. Oh God, but you're too stubborn, daughter. I hope you don't regret keeping him in your home. At least promise me you won't stop watching over him. All right, mom, I'll keep an eye on him. I'll let you know everything. It'll put my mind at ease. From now on, you must keep a close watch on that little boy. Natasha became increasingly reassured since the boy's mother's visit, finding no abnormal behavior from the boy. However, one evening, when Alex entered her sister's room, she discovered something horrifying. He began to disturb her sleep, until she woke up and ran to Nikita's room. But when she got there, Alex was no longer there, so Alex was the reason Nikita was crying. She didn't know if it was her brother or just herself. She didn't know what to do, she held her daughter, trying to calm her down. After managing to get her daughter to sleep, she went to the hospital. Alex's room to confront him, but something inside her stops her, and she feels she must proceed with greater caution. Suddenly, it occurs to her to take her son's fingerprints without him noticing and then go to the authorities to try to learn more about her adoptive son. I'm convinced the boy is the son of criminal, alcoholic parents or something like that, and that's why he behaves that way. I must seek professional help for Alex. He's a very troubled boy, the distressed woman said to herself as she awaited a response from the authorities. Natasha didn't let go of her daughter and kept a close eye on Alex, but that day an unexpected call would shake their world, transforming their lives forever. Ma'am, Natasha, we're calling from the police station. Listen carefully. We've reviewed the prints you sent us. So, tell me then, what did you discover? You must take your daughter and leave there immediately. Natasha doesn't know what's happening. She tries to understand what they're telling her. On the other end of the line, she has no idea what's going on and feels completely lost in the midst of the situation. But why? I don't understand. Tell me what's going on. We've discovered some surprising and disturbing details that endanger your life and your daughter's. That's why you must leave immediately. Natasha's heart races when she looks around desperately for help to protect her daughter and discover what's really going on. But it's too late. Her son Alex has overheard the conversation and rushes at the woman, attempting to attack her and render her unconscious, knowing she was in danger and that he had to protect his daughter at all costs. Natasha defends herself as best she can. As best as she could, she managed to escape with Nikita. She ran through the streets, feeling fear and desperation engulfing her. Finally, she reached the police station, but there she encountered a crushing truth that left her speechless. Come in, ma'am. Sit down and calm yourself. They're safe now, the officer offered her a glass of water. Please, tell me what's going on. Alex is not an eight-year-old boy. He's a man around 30 years old. He suffers from a very rare condition called Russell Silver Syndrome, which is a hereditary and congenital disease present from birth. Her ears seem to have played a trick on her. Or perhaps she was in the midst of a nightmare. But no, what she was hearing was real, and it was causing her profound heartache. Does that really exist? Yes, it does. It's considered a rare disease due to its low frequency, with only one case per 100,000 newborns. It's characterized by the person appearing not to age. So, despite being adults, people with this condition look like infants, and it's practically impossible to detect. How did I not realize? I'm horrified to think how I could have put my daughter in danger. Don't worry, ma'am. You and your daughter are now out of danger. And I have some good news for you. I sent some officers to your house, and they arrested the imposter just as he was about to leave. You can go home now. 
Now, mother and daughter are safe and enjoy their days playing in the park. The little one runs and jumps happily on the grass while her mother watches with a smile on her face. They both sit on the grass, enjoying the scenery while the mother tells amusing stories. The laughter of the little one brightens Natasha's soul. And filled with happiness and love, the mother hugs her daughter, feeling grateful for being able to share so many beautiful moments together. She promises herself never to be anything that puts her daughter at risk again. Both live in peace and harmony, enjoying each day of their lives. This story is real, although the names of the characters have been changed to protect their privacy. But what hasn't changed is the love and strength a mother can feel for her daughter, and the determination to protect her at all costs. After watching the first story above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Next, let's watch another similar story. Mom was perplexed by the continuous cycle of babysitters quitting. The departure of yet another caregiver marked the sixth consecutive resignation, leaving her bewildered. Tears streaked down her face when she sought answers to the recurring issue. Bridget Elks, a mother balancing work and childcare, struggled to comprehend the underlying reasons behind the trend. Despite her relentless efforts, she wasn't emotionally prepared to uncover the truth. Bridget, navigating single motherhood post an unexpected divorce, found herself in dire financial straits, necessitating a full-time job to sustain her family. While her children remained her top priority, she acknowledged the need for assistance. Following an extensive interview process, Lisa appeared to be the perfect fit to care for one-year-old Kirk and six-year-old Marie. Bridget's relief was palpable as she entrusted her children to Lisa's care, allowing her to focus on her professional responsibilities. However, their harmonious arrangement was short-lived. In the brief span of a few weeks, Lisa seamlessly integrated into Bridget's family, almost becoming an indispensable part of it. Bridget cherished the newfound stability, finally alleviating the strain of managing both work and childcare. Yet, their idyllic routine was shattered when Lisa abruptly tendered her resignation through a message, leaving Bridget stunned. Lisa's unceremonious departure, devoid of a proper farewell, left Bridget questioning what had transpired to prompt such a sudden change. Up until now, Bridget had been delighted with Lisa as her nanny. Only after some persuasion did Lisa reveal that her daughter, Marie, was the reason for her resignation. Bridget found it hard to believe. She felt compelled to defend her child, admonishing Lisa for her unprofessionalism and resolving to start the hiring process anew. After six months, Bridget found herself on the brink of tears. Six nannies had abruptly quit, leaving her bewildered. She couldn't fathom what was happening. While she acknowledged that children could be challenging at times, she couldn't understand why her children seemed to drive away every nanny. Surely her kids weren't any worse than others, she reasoned. So why did each nanny reach the same conclusion? Meg became the seventh nanny, and Bridget hoped for a different outcome this time. Setting up nanny cams throughout the house, she intended to uncover the truth behind the constant turnover. Despite initially seeming content with the job, Meg resigned two weeks in, like her predecessors. Now armed with video evidence, Bridget delved into the recordings to understand why Meg had left. What she discovered left her utterly terrified. Watching the footage, Bridget's eyes widened in disbelief. Marie's behavior was unrecognizable. While she had always been an angel around her mother, towards the end of Meg's tenure, Marie transformed into a different child entirely. Bridget witnessed Marie's defiance firsthand when she blatantly disregarded Meg's instructions. From refusing to hand over the baby's diaper bag to outright defying requests to wash her hands or prepare for school, Marie's behavior was shocking. Bridget's fury mounted when she realized the extent of her daughter's behavior. This final revelation became the tipping point for Meg, just as it had been for the previous nannies. Meg resigned after an altercation with Marie, who refused to quiet down despite her baby brother's need for sleep, asserting her dominance with threats of getting Meg fired. 
Bridget observed as Meg attempted to defuse the situation before ultimately reaching for her phone. Confronting Marie, Bridget emphasized the importance of respecting the babysitter and presented evidence of her misbehavior, hoping for a rational discussion. However, Marie's response shocked her mother. Defiantly, Marie claimed authority due to payment, declaring herself the boss. Bridget, struggling to find a replacement nanny, faced logistical challenges like missing swimming lessons. In response to Marie's complaints, Bridget pointed out the consequence of her actions. She was the reason for the sitter's departure and would miss out on activities until a replacement was found. Frustrated, Bridget turned to a parenting group on Facebook, seeking advice and venting her frustrations. However, she questioned if her disciplinary measures were sufficient. Angered by Marie's behavior, Bridget implemented consequences, stripping away privileges in response to her daughter's actions. Bringing her narrative to the present, Bridget disclosed that, until recently, Marie had been deprived of any remotely enjoyable activities. Playdates were no longer arranged, including those with the friend who had mistreated her nanny. As they attended different schools, their interactions ceased altogether. Bridget pondered the opinions of other parents, recognizing the impact of Marie's actions on someone's decision to leave a paid job. Concerns were voiced about Marie's reputation within the babysitter community, acknowledging that word spread swiftly among caregivers. One parent speculated that the incidents were likely not isolated but recurrent, with the resignations occurring at breaking points for the babysitters. Various perspectives emerged from the discussion. A babysitter from an affluent area shared a similar experience, highlighting the importance of parental support in addressing such behavior. Cooperation from both sides was deemed crucial, although it was acknowledged that disciplinary approaches varied depending on the child. A professional weighed in, suggesting that Marie's dissatisfaction with the arrangement might have contributed to the situation. Vicky, founder of the parenting blog Honest Mom, proposed that perhaps Marie's discontent stemmed from needing a sitter in the first place. Marie felt a sense of unmet needs, perhaps believing her voice wasn't heard, her autonomy diminished, and her personality clashed with the situation. Most likely, she felt a hint of abandonment by her parents. Could Bridget have handled things differently? Vicky pointed out that while many single moms require assistance with childcare, it's understandable for Marie to have felt let down. Vicky suggested Marie might have harbored resentment, especially if her mom hadn't properly explained the reasons behind needing a sitter. Parents, Vicky emphasized, should always communicate the why behind decisions, particularly when they have emotional implications. Instead of simply expecting Marie to accept a babysitter, Bridget should have explained why one was necessary, citing her hard work to provide for Marie's needs and expressing how loved and emotionally secure she is. Vicky shared her own childhood experience, expressing a natural desire to be with her parents and the importance of understanding the reasons for having sitters, even if she didn't enjoy it personally. According to Vicky, having a sitter didn't necessarily make life easier for her. Marie likely felt hurt and disregarded, leading her to act out. Her resistance to having a sitter was a plea for attention and support from her mother. Vicky believed that while it's crucial to teach children not to be rude, it's equally important to truly listen to them, paying attention to both their spoken and unspoken cues, and empathizing with their emotions while guiding them towards better ways of expressing themselves. However, Vicky noticed nuances in Marie's behavior, suggesting the situation wasn't straightforward. Bridget was right to address Marie's hurtful actions but should have also delved into the reasons behind Marie's behavior. Vicky emphasized that if children can't articulate their feelings, it's the parents' responsibility to understand and support them. Furthermore, someone, perhaps an adult, had conveyed to Marie that she had authority over her sitter, whether in jest or seriousness. Vicky concluded that at age six, understanding the complexities of money and power is challenging. She stressed the importance of teaching children emotional intelligence from an early age and learning from mistakes, highlighting that listening, empathizing, and modeling behavior are crucial in educating children. 
After watching the stories above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.